telegraph also were regarded as a means to spoil the indian customs and traditions then in several places the missionaries persecuted the, the hindu people and ridiculed the hindu rites rituals customs and all these things also led to the deep unrest among the indians so we see that the different part of people like rulers who had lost their kingdom due to various policies like the pain of flaps and others the merchants who were also were dissatisfied with british rule because of the trade policy or and the common people who felt that the british rule was a threat to their customs and traditions all these different strat of people had that anti british feeling all these to all these above causes when they was burning in the hearts of the indians at that time the british was introduced for this called as and field rifles which is it is the greenish cartridges that is greenish cartridge this there was the rumor that the cartridge was smeared with the pork can beef and which was deliberately done to spoil the religions of the indians that is both muslims and hindus so as soon as this news spread the sipai by name mangal pande on 6th of may 1857 revolted against meerat by refusing to use this enfield rifle and when the officer insisted he shot him dead which led to the outbreak of the revolt soon this news spread rapidly and several the sepoys at several places like tarpur and others began to revolt and thus this revolt began to spread it spread to bengal from bengal to delhi and central parts of india as soon as this news spread rulers like the ruler of out nawab wajid ali shah tatya tupi lakshmi bai the queen of jhansi several zamindars farmers peasants merchants they were also began to participate coming to the course of the revolt the revolt had spread over a period of one year from bengal to delhi all these revolts marched from bengal to delhi and freed the mogul emperor bahadur shah zafar and reinstated him coronated him on throne as the emperor of india this was the first phase of the revolt where the indians had won victories at the same time this revolt was a, a nightmare to the britishers who in the initial stage found it difficult to suppress however in the second phase of the movement in the second phase of the revolt the britishers who were able to get forces from bombay madras and other places who had an advantage of modern weapons and communication like railways and others 
were able to bring additional forces and suppress the revolt. In spite of suppressing the revolt, it was a, a nightmare which the Britishers could not forget for a long time. Now, coming to the nature of the revolt, different historians have described this event in dif different ways. The British historians, especially the company records, described it as the Sepoy Mutiny, while others describe it as the religious war against the Christians. Some others had described it as war between the black and the white races, while others describe it as war between the Eastern and the Western civilizations. Indian scholars, historians like, not historians, Indian writers, modern, modern Indian historians, especially Savarkar, described it as the first war of Indian independence. Lawrence, Sir John Lawrence and Celia described as a mutiny of the sepoy, but the statistics prove that those who had participated in the revolt were, revolt were not only sepoys but people belonging to other folds of society also had participated and hence it was not a mere mutiny. The modern historians argue that the revolt was started by the sepoys, but they could enlist the support of a large section of Indian population. But since it was not properly earlier planned, they called it as religion, a great upheaval or great revolt neither first war of independence nor the mutiny as such. Now coming to the, the aftermath of the revolt. First we will discuss the causes for the failure of the revolt. Why the Indians failed in this revolt? Some of the causes are that because the, the localization of mutiny, the mutiny was localized, it did not spread throughout the country, which shows that there was no unity among the Indians at that time. Then some of the leaders like Bahadur Shah Jafar had participated half-heartedly and did not give a proper good leadership. The support of Nizam who helped in suppressing the revolt, who stood like a wall, was also one of the cause for the failure of the revolt. Some of the states like Punjab and other six states, they re remained aloof to this event. Neither they supported the mutinous, this aloofness also led to the failure of the revolt. When there was no planned program or strategies of among the revoltiers, after achieving unexpected victory at Delhi, they did not immediately have any plan to what to do next. So meanwhile, by this time, the Britishers had advanced and were able to recapture Delhi. So this also, the mutineers failed 
to adopt the policy of destruction, which is also one of the cause for the failure of the revolt. The educated Indians also remained aloof and some of them remained loyal to the British authorities. The British had let's see, the British had an advantage of an efficient army, railways and weapons, modern weapons to their disposal, which helped in suppressing the revolt immediately. The military weakness, the mutineers did not have any control over the weapons and the means of transport and communication. So that was also another re reason for the failure of the revolt. Coming to the aftermath, that is the results of this mutiny, it led to an end of British East Bay Company rule and the Queen Victoria issued a proclamation which is famous, famously known as Queen's Proclamation and by this proclamation she promised that the policy of annexation uh, the doctrine of lapse would cease to exist now. The Board of Control also was abol it was abolished and in its place the Secretary of State for India was to be nominated and the Governor General came to be called as Viceroy. She also promised that Indians would be treated, the racial discrimination would, would be ended and Indians would be treated equally with the Britishers. And education was to be secular, they would not be pre encouraging or supporting the missionary activities. So, though this she promised all these things, yet they were not implemented, whereby the discontentment began to grow and which led to in course of time led to the establishment of Indian National Congress and Indian Renaissance, which led, led to the freedom struggle in India after 1885. So that is the, the impact of a reward, 1857. A reward. So, thank you.